Hi guys! Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to get off Optitex and talk about um, skirt drafting manipulations. Um, just sort of in theory and I want to sort of show you them off of Optitex. Hopefully it'll just give it um, to you in a little bit of a different context. Um, so I want to sort of talk in general about um, dart, seam, and sort of adding fullness in the skirt. And again, we're just going to go over some basic techniques this week um, that cover, again, dart manipulation, seam, manip seam manipulation, and adding a little bit of fullness uh, with flares. So I want to start with darts. And what I want to do is I kind of want to um, just sort of show you uh, how darts work to add fullness. So here what I have, as you can see, is I have a dart, okay? Um, darts, of course, are these sort of triangular insets uh, that we put into the fabric. Now, usually we fold them. Usually they're not cut out, but just for our purposes today, um, I'm going to cut out our darts because I want you to start to think of them as negative space. So what do I mean by negative space? Well, this is not going to be included in the fullness of the draft, right? So when we make darts, we close them up like this. And you can actually see what's happening as I do this. It will pop up like this. And this is the whole point of darts. And I'm gonna close this dart and I'm gonna show you how it affects the shape of uh, this piece of paper. And I'm using paper as a substitute for fabric. Um, it's very much like fabric. It's flexible like fabric is. It's a little different because it doesn't have a grain. Um, but it's also a good um, demonstrator of what these sort of techniques will do because it's very stiff. So we see the shapes put into it very, very clearly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the dart just by taping the edges together. And this is going to simulate how the darts are sewn together. Okay, so here we are. The dart is closed. You can see the little line is now coming. And if I put it flat, you can see what has happened to the paper. We get a point of fullness. And this is what darts do to our garments, is they create these areas of fullness. Now, in addition to creating an area of fullness, it's creating a smaller area. And we use, again, this sort of um, technique to adapt to the body's changes and curves. So in the areas where it's smaller, we put the full part of the dart. So as we can see, if I put this back upright, now the bottom is a little bit smaller. So imagine that was our waist, which is our small part. And here, this might be, um, I need to make some more sense like this, would be our full part of our butt. So we're now being able to shape around the body. So this demonstrates a few different things. One, the point of the, full, uh, of the dart is always where you're point of fullness is going to be. And um, the wide part of the dart is always going to be the smallest area. It's where the um, uh, fabric is going to be taken in the most. So again, we want to uh, always coordinate that with our body and keep those full part of our darts at the waist where we are small and the points where we're full. Okay. So on our skirt, We have two darts in the back, two darts in the front. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to work with the back because the back each, um, for our purposes, had a one inch to, uh, seam allowance, so the addition is going to be pretty easy. So let's see how we can adjust how many darts we have. Now. Our dart placement is, of course, the widest part, as we can see, is up here at the waist, which is where we want it. And these points of the dart are pointing toward the full, of, uh, full part of the butt on the back. And that's why the darts on the back are bigger than the ones on the front, because we have more curve in back to work around than we do in the front. Now, these are both one inch, which is just fine. That's how we drafted it. Um, sometimes back skirts uh, drafts will come with one dart, sometimes they'll come with two darts. Um, and it's really the same, just so long as you keep the intake the same. So um, let's say I no longer want two darts in back, I only want one dart in back. So all I have to do is keep
keep this DART intake the same. So our total DART intake, of course, 1 plus 1 equals 2. It's the easy part. So what do I do to create one DART from 2? Well, what I'm going to do is, since I no longer want two DARTs, I'm going to take them away. I'm not going to close them because I still need that extra space for the intake. I'm going to decide where I want my dart to be. So I'll measure in either from the center back. Let's assume this is the center back and this is the side seam. Let's say I want it all in the same place, like well, we did about a little, a little over three inches in. So I'm going to put one line there. That's where I want my dart. And then instead of breaking it up, I'm going to put the full two inch dart intake into that one dart. Now I'm going to keep it about the same length and pointing toward that area of fullness. Now, it's the same, and I'm going to show you that. So, um, we had, I sort of started with the one dart fullness on here, and here I have two darts. Let me flip that around so it's a little bit more. Two darts, okay? Now, this one was a one inch dart, so if I take it and I open it up again, Try not to rip the paper. It's one inch. And so to split it, I split it into two half inches. So if you can see, if I do one that's about half of the dart, and there's about the other half. So these two add up to this one inch. So let's see how they compare one dart to two darts. Close this one back up, and I will close up my two darts. Like so. So now this is my two dart one, see? And let's compare. So here they both are. And as you can see, they both have the same amount of fullness. In fact, their shape looks almost identical. You can tell that this is the two dart one by placing it over top. It sort of fits very easily, very nicely. Um, there's not a ton of distance in between, so they're really the same shape. So this is telling us that as long as we keep the same dart intake and point it toward the same area of fullness, our, chain, our fit will not change. And this is very important because say, all right, now I've got one dart. I don't want one dart. I want four darts. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to erase my one dart, again, keeping the same overall length of the all waistline because I don't want to close the darts, which is very important. It's, it's, it's easy to remember not to do this when you're drafting, but in Omnitex, um, you have to remember not to close the darts um, to eliminate them. In our next video, we're going to go over how, how to do all this stuff in Omnitex. So let's say now I have total two-inch dart intake, and I want four darts. Well, two divided by four is about a half inch, okay? So I know that each of my darts is going to be that half inch, and with four of them, I'm still going to make it all the way up to two. So let's figure what that's going to look like. I can still place them pretty much wherever I want, let's say about that three inches in, and then I'm going to do space them out. Maybe I'll put another one over here. I got a room there. So that's one, two, three, four darts. And again, I'm still going to point them down here. Now it's a little messy, but let me color in the negative space. But again, it's still going to work the same way. 
when I close all these four darts, I'm still going to get the same shape. I'm not going to get a bigger shape because I have more darts, because all of these darts are proportionately smaller. Um, and what really matters is that my dart intake is the same. Um, so I'm preserving that two inches, I'm just splitting it up a different way. And I can go crazy with this. I can uh, make as few or as many darts as I want. I just have to have at least one. And I can have as many as I want, just so long as the total dart intake, that negative space on the uh, waistline, remains two. And then, of course, I still want it to be pointed uh, toward the middle. You might say, well, what if you don't point them all toward that space? What if you do something where they're like spaced out evenly and all pointing downward from the waist like this? Well, what happens is we no longer have that one point of isolated fullness. So here we have two darts that are pointing sort of toward that same area. We're getting that one point right up here. If I were to do something like this, it's not wrong, but it's going to give me a shape that might not be adequate to our body. Since the points are all spread out like this, we're going to get a spread out area of fullness, and it's going to do something a little bit more like this instead of having a round area. It's just going to kind of create this line of fullness, like our, um, almost like a wave. And again, since this is much more like our body, since we have those points of roundness, we don't really have long tubes of roundness, that's what we want to um, go ahead and try to simulate. Okay, pretty easy, right? Um, so that's how we create the number of darts that we want in the skirt. Um, and this applies to the front as well. You can reduce your front darts down to one. You can reduce them or increase them to two, three, five, however you like. Um, just again, remember to keep that dart intake the same. Now, I want to do just mention one thing on the front. So, if we go ahead and look at the body, um, the lower half of the body, um, or I'll do the whole body, whatever, we're going to focus on the lower half, but if we take a look at the body in profile, we can see sort of where we need to really worry about um, fit. So if here's our body, it's a little weird without a head, a little bit of a head. Um, what we need is we need fullness here in the back for the butt because we can see that kind of coming out like that. And when we get to it, when we get to um, shirts, we need fullness here in the front around the bust because that's where it's full. But as you can see in the front here, it's not really that full. So if we do a little skirt like this, this is you know approximation of our um, skirt. We of course we've got the side seam, and we need the darts and back to create this point of fullness, but we don't really need the darts in front. Now we put the darts in front for the sloper to keep the cross grain stable. Now this will make sense if you think back to what you did in uh, FD21 when you made your skirt slopers. You wanted to keep that cross grain stable and straight across, which is really, really helpful for us um, on a sloper because keeping that grain stable allows uh, the um, pattern to sort of, the grains to remain um, a little bit, how to say more, um, proper. Uh, when you uh, start to manipulate it. Um, so having those sort of stabilized grain lines, again, um, just sort of helps the grain end up better when you do manipulate it. So that's why we do it for the slopers, just to kind of keep those stable grains. But if we're working on a finished pattern on the front, we do have the option to eliminate all darts, even if it's not a flare skirt. Now this is only true for the front, of course, because it's much flatter than the back. Um, so we can kind of get away with it. So how do we eliminate the darts on the front? Well, what we do is we can take them out of the side seam, or if we're going to have a center front seam, we can kind of um, uh, even it out. So we have two darts in the front on our pattern. And um, I believe they were about 5 eighths inch each. 
I might be wrong, I might be forgetting, but I think they're about 5 eighths inch, which means our total dart intake, 5 eighths plus 5 eighths, give us 10 eighths, gives us 1 and 2 eighths, gives us 1 and a quarter. Okay, so that's our total dart intake for the front. Again, and it's smaller already because we don't have as much fullness that we need to take care of. In fact, we don't really have much of any. So um, what I can do is I can take out these darts like so, but of course now we're about one and a quarter too much um, length on the front waist, it's too big. So we have to take it out of the waist somehow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure in from the side seam an inch and a quarter what was our dart intake. And essentially, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a dart out of the side seam. So I'm, I'm actually putting the dart in the side seam, and I'm gonna keep it about the same length as that original dart, and that was about three and a half inches. So I have this sort of new side seam. This is now the correct waist because um, I've taken away that one and a quarter that was the dart intake. And I can go ahead and just take away this part of the seam. And again, that's essentially putting the dart in the side seam. So we're still getting the benefit of, of the fit, uh, whatever it does. We're just skirting it off to the side. And since there's no real point of fullness here, that's okay. I mean, uh, essentially, you know, what happens is we still do have um, a large area go into a small area. So if this was the front of us, this is very wide and this is very narrow, but we do have that coming in and especially on the side seam we have that. We don't have a point of fullness here, but we don't have a point of fullness on the front. So um, that's okay to divert that point of fullness over to the side seam. Okay, so that's how if you wanted uh, to eliminate the darts on your front, uh, you can. So that's our basic dart manipulation. Let's talk about our basic seam manipulations. Now simulation, seam manipulations can get kind of complex, but I'm not gonna go into the really more complex stuff until next week. I'm just gonna do simple stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my skirt and I'm gonna assume that we have uh, one dart. Just because it's going to be easier to do so, uh, but I can show you um, also sort of how you might, if you wanted to do two seams. So let's assume I, wa I wanted a princess seam, which is just a, uh, a vertical line seam that goes about midway through the pattern itself. So you should be familiar with what princess seams are by now. Um, if not, just go for it. So we have that one dart that I created by adding the two inches of the dart intake into one, so it's a two inch dart up here. Again, this could vary too, depending on your dart, on your sizes or your draft, you know, not all slopers are the same, so, you know, it's not always gonna be two, but just on the size eight sloper that we're working with, it's two. So I have this one dart um, that I've created, and what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut out the dart, basically make this negative space, and then cut from the tip of the dart down to the hem, like so. And this gives me two pieces to my pattern. This is now my center back, because we're working the center back piece. And this is my side back panel. So if I were to make this, so this again is my side seam, this is my center back, and remember this is on half, so this is the center back. So these patterns that we're making, these slopers, they're only half of the garment because they're going to be placed uh, center front, center back on an on fold seam for when we cut out. So what this would look like if I were to make it, is it would look like this, okay? 
here's the skirt and it has the two princess seams coming down. Now what we did is we essentially put the dart in the seam, okay? So let me sort of bring them apart and show you what we did. Since we cut out that dart, we still get the negative space that the dart is providing. Okay, center back. This is our princess seam. And then, so this is our, our center back piece. Or if I go back to the reference sketch, it's this piece right here. And our side back piece will look like this. There's princess seam, here's side seam, and of course waist up here and hem. And then this piece gets cut twice and it's put here and here. Now a lot of people look at this and they say, oh, you know, okay, look at these lines. That seam isn't gonna go together. They're going in completely different directions, but that's exactly what you want. So what I'm really gonna to try to emphasize in this lesson is to look at these sort of negative spaces um, in your seams. And whenever you have two seams that are gonna be joined together, going in different directions like this, creating a negative space, you're gonna get a shape. So the same way, let's look at this in reality. So here's the dart that I had originally, right? Okay, see the negative space? That's this negative space here. Well, I certainly didn't have any trouble putting it together when it was a dart. Let's see if I have any trouble when I make it into a princess seam. So what I'm gonna do is, so what did I do on here? I cut out the dart, well my dart's already cut out. Okay, so that's fine. And then I simply, from the tip of the dart to the hem, cut a line. Okay, let's do it. So here are my two pieces, right, okay? If I put them together, right, I still get, I still see that negative space in, this, in the seam, and that's what I'm going for. So when I put together two seams that have, that are exactly the same, that are parallel to each other, that I, when I put the sort of pieces together without overlap, I don't get any negative space, I don't get any shape. And you can see that here, I can put these together, and let me do it, I'm gonna tape them together, and I'm not gonna get any shape. Oh no, I ran out of tape. Reuse them. Okay, so now I just taped this back together. I taped the seam, the seam, so from this point down. And again, I don't get any shape. I'm not getting any shape from this at all because, again, these are the same. And whenever, again, just let me repeat again, whenever you put together seams that are the same, that don't go in different directions, that don't create a negative space between them, you don't get any shape. But now let's continue, let's put the whole thing together. So as you can see, this was just a little seam down here. Let me go ahead and put the top part together and we can see what it looks like. So here it is, okay? And let me show it to you now like this. Look familiar? That's because it's now the same shape. This was our original dart. Just, just the one dart with nothing up here. And it has the same shape. And I can do the same sort of demo where I put them one on top of each other. That's because all I did is essentially instead of just having a dart, I put the dart in the seam. I hit it in the seam. And because I did so, I'm getting a shape. I'm getting that same shape that I had before. And the point of fullness is still the same, okay? So this is how we create 
um, seams. If we want to take out our darts, we'll not really take them out, but um, put seams instead. Now the nice part of this technique is once I cut out the dart, I can really do anything I want with that bottom seam. So we kept it super simple um, to reflect, you know, normal princess seam. But let's do a slightly more complex version. Okay, I had that one dart. Okay, cut it out. Now let's say I wanted to do something instead of just go straight down. Let's say I want to do this. That's perfectly fine. Again, just so long as I'm keeping this negative space where the dart originally was. So I would take this out and you can move out your pieces. So let's move them out because we cut this because these are now two separate pieces and see what they'll look like. So we have the darts. I'm still going to see that negative space there, but this doesn't need any fit. So it's going to go parallel to one another. And there we are. So what would this look like? This is now our center back. This is our side back. This is going to give us a little bit more style to that seam. So um, let's see what it will look like. So remember everything gets doubled up or the other half gets, and it would look, let's see, come down, comes in and then out around like this. And then of course we'd have one on the other side. So that's the skirt that you would be left with, okay? Um, it has a little bit fancier seam and you can really do anything you want. So for example, let's do another version of that seam. Let's make and again, center back, side seam. There's the dart. Okay. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Alright, now I'm going to cut out the dart. Of course, we always start there when we're making a seam like this. We cut out the dart. And now I'm going to take this seam and I'm going to bring it like this. Okay? This is going to give us sort of like a bibbed inset and this is going to be our side seam. So what would this look like um, in actuality? Well, it would look like this. And it's still giving us the exact same shape, the exact same fit as our original sloper. Pretty neat, huh? So now you can start to see, um, you know, our options. We can really do so many things. We just have to follow these sort of simple rules of manipulation and we can create any kind of seam uh, that we want, really. Um, and again, there's even more complex versions of this if, uh, you know, you, you don't want to be limited. But just remember that we're cutting out the dart, from the tip of the dart, we're bringing out a seam. And you can bring that seam wherever you want. You can make it do whatever you want um, because all the fit is really up here. So long as you keep that consistent, you can do whatever you want with the rest of the seam. Um, and of course, this is really nice technique to use for sort of color blocking and different things like that. Um, okay, so that's our basic seam manipulation. Um, again, keeping making sure, and I really can't emphasize enough because if anyone makes these seams wrong, you know, they'll just cut out this shape and they'll make something like this. Now this is wrong and I know it's instantly wrong, instantly by looking at it, that it's wrong. How do I know that it's wrong? Well, what are we missing between these two pieces? We're missing that ne negative space. We're missing that dart shape that is going to give us fit and fullness. Okay? So, um, especially if this is the back, um, I know that it, of course, is going to be incorrect. I'm not going to be able to get the fit that I want. So, if I were to make this and put it on someone, um, it's probably going to be too full at the waist. If, if you included the dart space, if you took out the dark spa dart space, 
Um, it's it's going to be too small at the hip. It's it's just simply not going to fit. It's not going to create that shape that you need it to to fit around the body. Only when you get, or when only when you have that negative space where it needs to be to create the fit, is your pattern going to be correct? Okay. So always look for those negative spaces within your pattern. Make sure that you're getting those shapes where they are and remember what they mean. So even though that this is a seam, it still works like a dart. So this big area, the full area, is going to be the smallest when it comes in. And it's going to take it in, take it in, take it in. And here where it points, that's where a point of fullness is going to be placed. Hopefully nicely around the butt. So um, there's your seam manipulation. Now um, just real quickly, so that is for one dart, which of course you can, um, you know, if you want to do that, just go ahead and use the dart manipulation technique I previously taught you to create one dart and then create your seam from there. But of course you can do the same thing with two darts. You can just use two seams. So your original sloper had two darts. Okay. So um, in this instance, I can simply just do the procedure twice. So I can cut both darts out. Let's assume that they are now negative space. They're cut out. And I can go from tip of the dart down twice. One, two. Now this is going to give me uh, what's called a gourd skirt, which has many different panels. So in uh, when I create this skirt, what is it going to look like? Well, now we have... Let's assume that this is on fold, this is center back, this is side seam, this is the full skirt when it's made. All right, we have one here, so that would be like sort of our normal princess seam, but then we have another one as well. So we'll actually have four seams in the, in the back here. Um, and again, it could be really fun, you can do a little stripe down there, um, use color blocking, whatever you want. Um, um, again, and you can make even more if you do more darts, um, which you also know how to do now. Uh, so again, uh, very simple. And again, same thing, I can make these dart, these seams do whatever I want. So let's say I wanted to, let's do that, you know, kind of like this, and then let's do kind of like that. So what would this look like, okay? That would look like this. And then this goes down to the corner, and this goes down to the corner. So that would be that skirt. Pretty neat. Um, so feel free, feel creative. Hopefully um, uh, you can understand this technique to allow you to make all si kinds of different designs and skirts. And um, we have a, a, a technique this week, um, the mermaid skirt, which is going to utilize all of them, including our final one, which is going to be basic flare. So let's go over basic flare. Now, I'm going to go over first and then I want to show you uh, what happens. So, um, we can add, so when I talk about flares, about kind of big flared out skirts, um, and I want to show you sort of two ways to do it. And I'm going to show you kind of very simply how to make a flared skirt. So, um, let's go back to our, you know, front or back sloper. Now it doesn't really matter but they both have two darts in them. Okay, so let's say, let's say this is still the center back, but again, it's the same for the front, and this is the side seam, and these are our darts up here, okay? What I'm gonna do is, same thing, I'm gonna cut out the darts, so these are, let's assume they weren't, um, I wanna make these negative spaces, so let's go ahead and cut them out. Okay, now I'm going <laughs> to, this is all sort of, you know, um, build on one another. I'm going to basically make uh, uh, the princess seams that I showed you in the sort of previous one. I'm going to cut down to the head. 
And this I do want to do straight. Um, uh, uh, you want to keep it straight because again, these seams are not going to be there in the final version. Um, so there's really no point in getting crazy with them. Um, so just straight down. So now I have three pieces. I have one, two, three pieces. Now I can do more uh, pieces and a lot of times pattern makers will tell you to do more because the more will uh, you do uh, will even out the flares uh, more evenly. Um, but I like shortcuts. <laughs> so one, two, three. What are we going to do for these pieces? Well, we have to add fullness, okay? So how are we going to do that? Um, well, I'm going to keep this one piece. The grain is going to be important here. So the grain is going like this right now, right? Because it always goes up along our center front or our center back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one the way it is. Then I'm essentially going to take this piece and rotate it out. So I'm going to take it and rotate it out. Um, so let's do that. And I want to do that so the darts lines meet up. Now this might make a lot more sense in Optitext because it can actually take the physical piece and start to rotate it instead of just draw it. Um, but, well, let's see. So let's say I'm going to start to rotate that piece to, uh, to out and I'm going to sort of, I'm going to close the dart by uh, lining it up. So I'm not closing it up, I'm just rotating that dart leg that was in piece two. Because if you remember, here's Pierce piece two. It looks like this. This was the legs of the two darts. And I'm going to take this leg and I'm going to match it up right here. And what that is going to do is it's going to start to kick up the waist and it's going to open up what, what kind of looks like another triangular shape down here. Now this is not a dart because we're not going to close this, so it's not necessarily negative space because we're going to include it in the pattern. What it's creating is fullness. Um, it's adding to the pattern. Whenever I add to the pattern, it's parts that are going to go away from the body. Okay, so this was two, and let's do the same thing to piece number three. So piece number three looks the same as two. It just has, you know, this one leg, so I'm going to match up this dart leg here. I'm going to run out of room. i got to get rid of this. And so there's my piece three, okay? So what we did is we rotated all these pieces to match up the waist. So now the waist and it's important not to overlap rolls, so it has to be too small. My waist is exactly what I want it, and it no longer has any dart intake in it because when we do flared skirts, it's not fit to the body. So we do not need darts or seams to create those contoured shapes. It simply has a point and comes out. And that's what we see here. Now this is going to become our entire skirt. So we're going to use these pieces and trace over it and make the entire thing our skirt pattern piece. And this would be our flared skirt pattern piece for the back, the entire thing. Center back is the same and grain also stays the same. Okay? Now I can rotate, start to rotate them out a little bit more if I want. The more I rotate them out, the bigger these shapes are going to become. And the bigger that these shapes become, the more fullness I get. In addition, so as you can see, I kind of, there are uh, a little ones. You want to keep these shapes relatively the same for even fullness. Now we can play with the amount of fullness um, uh, a little bit later, but that's going to get, again, into our more sort of complex uh, skirt drafting to sort of adjust where the fullness is more or less, but um, keeping it even keeps those nice flares uh, to begin with. Now, um, I, if you remember doing your flared skirt from FD11, you remember what you did is you would drape it, kind of keeping the cross grain stable, starting here, and then what you did is you cut and you slash the grain. And this is essentially what we're doing here. So we're going straight, and then we are angling the grain. And then we're going straight, 
and then we're angling the grain again. So in this case, we're going up, angling, angling. And um, if you remember what happened, every time you angled the grain like that, it would push out a flare. So theoretically, every time you slash and spread, you're getting a flare. So in this instance, you would get two flares. Now, in reality, um, what matters a lot more is the type of fabric that you're doing. Now, I made this, and if I cut, made this pattern and cut it out um, in a very stiff fabric, sure, maybe I get one, maybe I get two flares. But if I did a very limp fabric, like a chiffon or a charmeuse, I'm just going to get more flares. It's the nature of the fabric. The nature of the fabric will trump whatever you do in your pattern. Um, so uh, if you need to absolutely, absolutely calculate your number of drapes 100%, um, you might want to drape in fabric. That's one of the um, uh, advantages of draping in fabric over pattern making. There's a lot of advantages to pattern making, um, uh, but this unfortunately is not one of them. So if you need to have an exact number of flares or have those flares in an exact location, um, you're probably best draping in the fabric, not in muslin, uh, because again, muslin does not represent the characteristics of every fabric. It's its own fabric with its own characteristics. But say you are making something in a satin or a charmeuse or a whatever, um, drape and you need those flares to exactly line up or, or be as the number to be a very specific number. Um, you can start with a pattern, but then I would go ahead and, you know, uh, test it out on a form to make sure it's doing uh, what you want to do. Um, and you might need to do some final adjustments to the pattern uh, on the form with the fabric to make sure that you're getting everything precisely as possible. Okay, so um, this is our uh, flare skirt. And I want to show you just a, you know, so this, you know, to make it, just to give you that little reference again, um, would be come out and have those little flares. And let's draw it theoretically correct, so we're gonna have about, you know, little flares like that. So there's our little flared skirt, okay? But we can use this slash and spread technique to create flares and flounces wherever we want. So let's take a different approach. Let's not do the entire skirt, but let's add a little flouncy. And this is gonna be what we do in the mermaid skirt. So let's do this skirt. Let's make a skirt. And again, this is the whole thing. And just for, yeah, sure, okay, we'll have the little darts in it, just for accuracy. And we're gonna crop off and we're gonna just make a little, little flounce, a little something like this. It's gonna go all around and be little, cute little flounce like that, okay? So how do we make that? So what we're going to do is, let's start with our sloper again, and here's our darts, right, because we have them in the picture, so we got to have them here. And what I want to do is I want to cut off this section that is going to be the flounce, okay? So make it a little bit more even. Let's say this is my flounce section from here to here. It's going to be from here to here, and this area is going to be the flounce, okay? So um, same as before, this is our center back, this is our side seam, that's still going to be important. Um, so I want to cut this section out. So let's assume I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut it off. This is still my center back, and this is still my side seam, and I'm going to put that piece over here. And again, this is actually now done. I don't have to do anything more to this piece except for our, you know, the, the final finishing stuff like seam allowance and, and notes and things like that that we'd always have to do. And I'm essentially going to do the same thing to this little strip as I did before. I'll cut it into thirds or if you want more flares or more fullness or, you know, even out or, um, you know, however many you want. I kind of like three. Three, like I said, most people would say three is not enough, but it's always been good enough for me. Um, so these are now, our th uh, I've cut it into thirds, and it doesn't look too even. It should be even, so they should be even thirds. And I'm going to do the same technique as I did before. 
I'm going to keep the center back straight on grain, because remember our grain's going like this from where it was before, like so. And here's our number one. So that doesn't do anything. I'm just moving it up. Okay? It's number one piece. And here's our grain. And now I'm going to take two and I'm going to rotate that out. I'm going to make sure that these points stay together. But I'm just going to take it and sort of whoop, turn it out. There's piece two. And again, it is important that we keep this because this whole line is this distance. And this is where the seam is going to end up coming into. So I want to preserve the length. I don't want to overlap or start gapping it. And we're going to take our third piece and we're going to rotate it out even further. So we're going to just sort of take and rotate out these pieces like so. Okay, now the shape should seem familiar because now what we do is we take all these pieces and use their shape to create the piece that is going to become our flounce. Now this piece is our flounce, this whole thing right here. And again, grain is still going to be here on my center front, like so. If I were to take this piece, it's now looking like this. Now, I get a lot of students going, oh, well, Kate, look at the difference between these seams now. How, how is that going to work? Um, and I say it's the same way. And this is a very important because this is now a new negative shape that we um, are going to see. And it is creating fullness in a different way. It's not going to create that point of fullness. Um, that we saw with the darts, it's going to create flared fullness. Um, and so whenever we have these curved lines, these sort of arcs that are being forced to go into a straight line, we get fullness, um, flared fullness. Um, so again, this is another negative space in your pattern that you should be looking for. Whenever you see this sort of, you know, uh, negative space here, this sort of curved line into a straight line, you should know that it's going to create and push out flares. Let's see how that works. So I have, oh look, it's almost even the same size, uh, my nice little flare piece right here. And I have my little skirt piece up here. Now, I didn't put the darts in because that's not important. I'm the, what's important is the flares. And so what I want to do is I want this piece, this curved edge, to come into this straight edge. Now, let's see what happens when I do. Now, at this point, you might want to, this is, you know, any kind of curve like this, you might want to just notch the seam allowance a little bit better. It um, kind of breaks up the grain. Now, it's not that important with paper because paper doesn't have grain, um, but with your fabric, it does. And the notching in the seam allowance, which are just little snips um, in the seam allowance, will kind of break up the grain a little bit and free up the fabric to create those really nice um, uh, flares. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now, I'm gonna put this on here and we're gonna see what happens. Now remember that this uh, paper is rather stiff, so um, I, and it's you know a small area, so the flares are going to be kind of few, but large.
Okay. This is what we get. So here it is. Sort of put it up here. I can put it sort of flat here. And you can see, so this is the, the skirt area. And now this is our flounce. Now, of course, it fits here because fabric or paper or anything like that is flexible. But you can see what's happening to this area. It's being forced outward. First outward and in these sort of cone shapes. Now, let me show you what it looks like on the side, like this, okay? So, again, this is the flat part. And then this seam is forcing that shape up and around like that, okay? So that is how we get those nice conical flares. It's because of the negative space that we included in the pattern between those seams. Um, and again, this is just another example of when you look at these sort of shapes, these negative shapes that we can include in the pattern, what kind of shape that you're going to create. Now you might say, well that original flare skirt didn't have a straight line that it was going into. How does it get its flares? Well, essentially it does, because um, when we have a flared skirt, we're going to do one of two things. So here's our uh, the flared skirt that we had, the, the whole thing, the whole flared skirt that we had before. It will look kind of like this, right? And here's your curved, that nice curved line up here. Now to finish it, we're going to do one of two things. We're either going to put a facing on it or we're going to put a waistband on it. So if we put it into a waistband, what shape is the waistband? Looks like this, right? So there's our straight line. So when we attach this waist into our waistband, that's where we get the, uh, the flares and the volume that we want. Same thing with a facing. A facing is essentially just the same thing. We just put it on the inside. Still a straight line. We're still forcing those um, flares outward. And even if you were just to put it on yourself, um, your waist is kind of a straight line, so you'd put it down and gravity would almost force it um, into that sort of flared uh, outline. Okay, so again, just long story short, always look at the um, negative spaces in between your pattern pieces because they tell you a lot about the final shape of the pattern. Um, and, you know, you can create fullness like this anywhere you want. This is not just applicable to skirts, but if you wanted to create a bell sleeve that way, um, uh, you know, you can, you can, you know, you have your sleeve pattern, you cut it, divide up the area you want, split it out, get something that looks like this. There's the arc, there's the thing, put it together you get a little bell sleeve. A little fullness like that. Uh, you can do it on shirts, you can do it on pants, you can do it on sleeves, you can do it anywhere you want, a little flare or ruffle or fullness. Um, it works anywhere. Um, so I'm going to pretty much wrap that up here. In our next video, of course, we're going to go over all of these different techniques. Uh, we're just going to look at what it will look like in OptiTech. So I'll join you in OptiTech's uh, to go over these techniques and how they're utilized in that software. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.